So good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this IKO pre-seminar remote training on the Corsia Central Register, the CCR, for the Asia Pacific region. My name is Jane Hopi and I am the director in charge of the environmental program in ICAO. And I will be providing you with an overview of this webinar. So you are all aware um, that we had planned initially for face-to-face um, -face training in 2020 for um, mainly dedicated to the CCR, but to update you all in um, many of the implementation elements of the course here. And due to the, the COVID-19 crisis, um, those face-to-face -face seminars had to be postponed to a later uh, time this year. So um, we still don't have the, the final dates for the, the regional seminars and they will be announced as soon as we have more certainty on how we, we are going to proceed with the planning of all the events in IK. We wanted nevertheless to make sure that all the focal points were duly supported in the efforts uh, for consolidated uh, the information uh, from their operators um, so that they could then um, submit them, them to ICAO as um, in the uh, SARS. So to start with, we have decided to put together this um, online session. It's a three hour training session um, focused on the Corsa Central Registry the CCR, and we are doing that to all the regions uh, as originally planned um, during this um, uh, April time. Um, but uh, it's very important for you to note that this is to support you on the best way possible. And it's not a replacement of the 2020 uh, Corsair Regional Seminars. We still intend to go and have our face-to-face -face seminars as soon as possible. Next slide. Yeah. So um, let's remind ourselves uh, a little bit from uh, what we are doing. So uh, you know that in the Annex 16, um, we have uh, the standards and recommended practices for course, yeah. And we, from there, uh, we have a date that uh, from 1st January 2019, all airplane operators conducting international flights were required to monitor the CO2 emissions from these flights. So since uh, 1st January last year, all the operators have been uh, following up and collecting that information. Um, you have also prior to that collection, you have met with your operators, you have agreed on a, a monitoring plan, on emissions monitoring plan, and that information is now collected. Um, this uh, information compiled by the airplane operators in the corresponding annual emissions report is subject to a third party verification. So by now, operators have put all that information together and they have been uh, ready for the verification of a third party. Uh, also, uh, an important deadline was the 31st of uh, May this year. It's when all this uh, information collected by the operators was verified by the, the third parties and all that information then will be submitted to states. States would then have a few more months to verify all this information and to submit to ICAO um, in an aggregate format, the, the 2019 CO2 emissions data per state pair through the Corsia Central Registry. So um, that's an exercise, of course, that would be then um, done as well for the 2020 emissions and um, the 2019 and the 2020 emissions 
will form then the Corsia baseline for the implementation of Corsia in the upcoming Corsia phases. So, to do all of that, states had to be trained on how to submit that information through the Corsia Central Registry. And that's the main objective of our seminar today. We want to provide you some initial information on how you will be using the functionalities of the CCR, uh, reminding everybody again that um, we still intend to have a more productive face-to-face -face training during the seminars when um, we have uh, the final, the, the date established uh, still this year. So the focus areas today is we already having that introduction and then uh, overview, and then you'll be having a specific introduction to the tool itself. So you have an introduction to the CCR. Then you have a general familiarization with the CCR web interface, how to upload the CO2 emissions into the CCR, um, and then finally how to submit that CO2 emissions information to IK. Next. So for you to know what's the plan today, we have this three hour session. We have two segments. We'll have a little break uh, between the two. Um, we are now doing the uh, welcome. Then we have the introduction to the CCR. We'll have a time for question and answers. Then you'll be looking into a demo for the, the CCR itself, the central register, then getting familiar with the CCR. Then you have another question and answers time, um, time for you. We'll break. Then you have a, a, a demo on how to report the CO2 emissions, and we are going to make an in-class exercise. After that, we have another time for question and answers. Then we have another demo on um, your service request, and then a question and answers, and then we'll be closing. You see there is a lot of times for you to interact with us with question and answers, specifically on the topic um, of today's uh, seminar, which is the CCR. Please use all your time to focus on the CCR training because you need to get acquainted too with the tool today, okay? Each participant has been given an access to uh, his, her state's uh, account. It's a training version of the CCR. For the, the CCR itself afterwards, you, you'll get that um, uh, log, your login afterwards. So we, we are many in that call. And uh, to avoid potential issues with the audio, we will, we will mute all of you during the presentations. That does not mean that you cannot answer, ask questions. You will be asking questions. So um, the way we are doing that in an organized manner is if you have a question or comment, you have a, a, a chat function. It's on the top uh, of your screen in the right. It's this speech bubble icon that you see um, close to the participants list. So if you click into that speech bubble icon, then you see that there is a, uh, a space that will come in and then you just type on the, on the space you have for typing and you can send your question to everyone. Please avoid to send it to the presenter. Right now, the presenter will only be looking into the main screen with all the participants. And of course, your question must be a very uh, important question for someone else um, that is participating. So all the questions are very welcome. Um, also, uh, the presenter will um, address your question um, either during or after the presentation, but don't feel bad if you, your question is skipped at any, any point. It's because probably uh, the presenter already know that there will be a slide addressing your question just after or, you know, if you feel it, the question was not yet addressed, ask again. But again, today is the time for us to get acquainted to the CCR, to have answers regarding the CCR. Please profit that time to do so. Um, previous to that call, um, you as a focal point, you have already received a lot of information on Corsia and also on the Corsia CCR. In front of you, you have a slide with all the information that you, you have already in our website, 
uh, for you on Corsia. However, there was something that was very important that was uh, prepared for you just before that uh, webinar and that you have received by email. We have prepared in the Secretariat a series of leaflets specifically on the CCR, on the different features of the CCR. So you have now uh, uh, a set of four more leaflets specifically on the course at CCR that were distributed to you. And we are going to address all the, all the subjects that are therein throughout this uh, webinar. So um, I, I fully realize that um, we are all uh, passing through a very difficult uh, time. And I, I really wanted to thank you very much for coming to joining us uh, today. I'm pleased that you could come and join us today. And um, I want to reassure you that it is uh, our intent to support all the focal points the best way we can. Um, we are looking into very different flexible ways to do so. And I will, um, on that note, um, wish you an, an extremely successful uh, webinar. I hope it's productive for you and um, please keep safe. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jane, uh, for the opening remark. Um, good morning, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jiyun Zhang, and I'm an Associate Environmental Officer at ICAO Secretariat of Working on Corsia. For the coming hour and a half, uh, or uh, an hour and 20 something minutes, I'll give you a brief introduction of the Corsia Central Registry, CCR, and walk you through the main features of the CCR, uh, during which you will get to taste the CCR and its main features to better prepare yourself to report information, including the CO2 emissions, as Jane mentioned, to ICAO um, in the uh, coming months. So before we kick start, um, as I've sort of briefly introduced uh, before um, the session started, you should have received an email from Toronto last week with a link to set password to access the CCR. If you have already followed the instruction from Toronto and set your account, please check if you can still log into the system properly. If you haven't set the password yet, please click uh, you, the, the link that has been sent to you may not be active anymore. So please uh, go to corsia.toronto.com and before, when you try to log in, there is a forgot password um, sign. You can click that and enter your official email address to reset the password. If you still have issues resetting the password, please contact organizers through the chat function um, so that one of the organizers can support you accordingly. So um, let us begin the actual um, sort of presentation. So we'll first provide you with a brief overview of background uh, uh, information on the CCR, and then walk you through the functionalities. So let's start with a brief background on ICAO's mandate on the development and operationalization of CCR. At the 39th assembly, when the Corsia was first adopted, the assembly instructed the ICAO Council to establish a consolidated CCR, uh, Corsia Central Registry, for, operation, for operationalization in order to facilitate reporting between ICAO and states. This was further uh, translated into Annex 16, Volume 4, which listed Corsia Central Registry as one of the five key implementation elements of Corsia. Furthermore, in the last assembly, in the uh, 40th assembly, ICAO member states have requested the Council to establish CCR by early 2020, right now, um, to enable the reporting of relevant information from states to ICAO. Um, I know this can be very wordy and may not seem straightforward, so let me briefly explain to you with a conceptual diagram how, to, how the CCR uh, should work. So I'm seeing in the chat function that there are people who are still having issues. Um, one of the organizers will send you another link or either uh, check the account and, or send you another link. Please check uh, whether your official email address that, has, that you have communicated to uh, the organizer is correct. Um, in, if so, they will be able to address your concerns right away. So um, let us sort of um, look at how information flows between stakeholders in the context of Corsia or in the context of CC, uh, Corsia CCR. 
you may have um, already sort of seen this diagram in the course year leaflet. Um, there are three sort of main stakeholders related to Corsia or Corsia CCR. First is we have the airplane operators here um, on the left hand side that operate international, oper uh, international flights. And then there are states authorities or uh, civil aviation authorities here in the diagram, um, which is the state. And then there is ICAO. Um, so let's focus on what we have to um, report to ICAO in the near future, the CO2 emissions information, and then um, also touch on the cancelled emissions units and see what role CCR plays in this context. So according to Annex 16, Volume 4, um, airplane operators um, will report verified emissions to the state, as Jane mentioned uh, in the earlier uh, in this slide. Um, the states will, a uh, state authority will then collect this information from all airplane operators and aggregate it, um, consolidate it, and submit to ICAO. And then ICAO will, um, ICAO will collect information from all um, states and then process the information and then publish it um, in an aggregated form on, on the ICAO website. Um, in addition, ICAO will calculate the sector's growth factor and report uh, back to states and also publishes this result on the ICAO website. Then using the sector's growth factor, states will calculate the offsetting requirement for each and every airplane operators attributed to the state. Based on this offsetting requirement, um, each operator will uh, purchase and cancel emission units to meet its offsetting requirements and report it back to the state that is attributed. State will, just like the CO2 emissions, again aggregate and consol consolidate all the information and data and submits to ICAO. ICAO again will aggregate uh, the information, report uh, uh, the reported information and publishes on the ICAO website uh, accordingly. So in summary, you see that there are different information with varying aggregation and also complexity, different multiple, uh, different and multiple stakeholders towards different directions, information flow between, uh, you know, towards different directions and at a different time frame. So it's very complicated kind of information flow between between um, states, ICAO, etc. So this is, and this is exactly why CCR uh, has been established to facilitate the reporting and communication between states and ICAO, and to facilitate ICAO to collate information and publish and, and sort of process them in, in, a, in ways to publish them on the ICAO website as needed. As you see in the bu blue bubble here, please take note that CCR is not to facilitate the reporting between state and airplane operators. It is to facilitate the reporting from states to ICAO and ICAO to states. As mentioned, this is just an example of CO2 emissions and cancelled emission offset units, but there are other reporting areas that needs to be reported through CCR. And um, let me sort of sort of walk you through what other areas that we have to cover um, in or what should be reported through CCR. And as mentioned, um, these sort of graphic can be checked in the leaflet, Corsia leaflet, um, that Jane mentioned in her last slide. So um, in this table, different sort of shading um, indicates different phases of Corsia. At the, at the top um, head, you see uh, in the headline, you see baseline, pilot phase, uh, first phase, etc. So, for example, white color indicates baseline period, light gray is for the pilot phase, light blue for the first phase, and then darker blue for the second phase. On the left-hand side of the table is a list of five Corsia relevant information and data to be reported by state to ICAO. So these are the five reporting areas um, that, uh, that I mentioned earlier. So airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, Corsia eligible fuels, and cancelled emission units. However, information for these five reporting areas for a given year will not be submitted at the same time. So for example, for the reporting year of 2021, um, information on airplane operators and verification bodies will be submitted in 2020 by 31st of, uh, by 31st of November. Um, whereas data on CO2 emissions and course eligible fuels 
uh, for 2021 can only be submitted in 2022 by 31st of July. Since the information should be about past, meaning 2021's um, CO2 emissions, then once all the pilot phase uh, from 2021 to 23 emission information and uh, C uh, course eligible fuel information is reported, that's only when you would know the amount of emission units to be cancelled by the airplane operators. So the cancelled emission units for the pilot phase, including 2021, will only be reported in 2025 by, again, 31st of July. In other words, information um, for a given year will be reported at a varying time frame, depending on the reporting areas. So for this year, 2020 then, um, what information should be reported to ICAO? As you see in this table, as a Corsia focal point, you will have to report 2019 CO2 emissions data to ICAO by August uh, 2020, and the list of airport operators and verification bodies for 2021. So you see uh, for 2020, you have two um, airport operators list and verification bodies, for 2021 data by November, and also CO2, uh, 2019 CO2 emissions data by, uh, by August. And then as an option, uh, you can also report Corsia eligible fuels that was used in 2019, but this is absolutely optional and purely for information purposes. This data will not be used for any calculation of baseline setting whatsoever. Then you would question um, on what about this 2019 and 20 data on airplane operators and verification bodies? Um, what about them? Like, do you have to report it again on the CCR since uh, you have, even if you have reported on the on the ICAO um, spread, online spreadsheet? Um, they were, as, as I mentioned, you know, they were indeed reported to ICAO by multiple states um, as per Annex 16 using a different means, the online spreadsheet that is actually still active at the moment um, as there is no CCR that is operational. Um, as of yet. So, however, uh, the CCR is expected to operationalize in a few weeks, and once CCR is fully operative, this online spreadsheet information uh, or this online spreadsheet itself will no longer be functional. And the information there that has been reported already will be automatically imported to CCR. So, in, uh, in other words, you don't have to take any action whatsoever for these, uh, this year. In the meantime, you can still use a spreadsheet again for, say, if there's any update on the verification bodies list, but um, uh, for the upcoming few weeks, but uh, before the official launch of CCR. Once uh, the CCR is officially launched, then, uh, then you should report verification bodies um, or any updates to the CCR. So um, I mentioned that uh, information and data that is collected through CCR will be used for ICAO to publish uh, relevant information into documents that support the implementation of Corsia. So here, um, Corsia um, airplane operators uh, to state attribution, for example, is a list of airplane operators that, and, and the states to which they are attributed. Um, this information is used to avoid any duplication or reporting gaps. The third edition was published in December last year and is already uh, is available on the IK website, obviously. Um, the next edition will be available later this month uh, to include newly added uh, list, um, uh, newly added list if there is any. Um, the second document is Corsia 2020 emissions document. Um, so this document will include the total CO2 emissions from international aviation in 2020. And um, this information will be used to determine the first year uh, for the new entrants, if there is any um, that has offsetting requirement. Third is Corsia annual sectors uh, growth factor um, based on the information collected through CCR. ICAO, again, as I explained in the previous slide, ICAO will um, collate and calculate this sector's growth factor and publish it for each year. States will use this information and then calculate individual airplane operators um, offsetting requirement um, and inform them accordingly. In addition, um, so the previous documents were about uh, 
information and data collected through CCR for the implementation of Corsia. There are other, uh, other documents um, that is for transparency purposes um, through a document called CCR Information and Data for Transparency. Um, the information there will be list of verification bodies accredited in each state already published with fifth update and also um, that that has been um, that has been shared through the, uh, the spreadsheet online spreadsheet that I mentioned earlier and also um, once we have more information there will be total average CO2 emissions for nine, 2019 and 20 aggregated for all airplane operators on each state pair route. Um, again, this is for transparency purposes. Total annual CO2 emissions aggregated for all airplane operators on each state pair uh, with identification of state pairs subject to offsetting requirements. There will be information and data on CO2 emissions for each airplane operators and also information and data on Corsia eligible fuels that has been claimed. Um, finally, offsetting requirements and emissions units cancelled at states and global aggregate level for a specific compliance period will be also available in this document. At the moment and the uh, current version, um, there is only uh, the, the list of verification bodies accredited in each state because the other information will be sort of collated as, as we enter uh, further years in Corsia. So, um, Fifth edition um, is published in March 2020 and uh, will be updated as, as uh, new information pops up and, and uh, of course subject to Council's approval. Um, as Jane mentioned, this information that I have given you for a brief overview of CCR or what it should be, um, you can check that information uh, in the Corsia leaflet, specifically Corsia leaflet number six and seven on CCR that is available on the ICAO webpage. Additional leaflet uh, specific to CCR was created recently, as Jane mentioned, and was sent to you last week, um, along with the invitation to this pre-seminar training. Please check that information and if there's any questions or comments, please feel free to contact ICAO uh, Secretariat. So um, now that I have sort of given you or refreshed, uh, refreshed you with the context and background of the CCR, let's uh, focus on how CCR wo works now. So CCR has been implemented as an online, online and user kind of friendly web application using cloud services. There are four key features of the CCR, um, and the first is the, the um, key features of the CCR, and first is that each member state has one CCR account. Um, there could be multiple users that can be nominated by the state and also being author authorized to use CCR to, to access this account. Each user will have a unique login details, username and password, and is given access to certain functions of the CCR based on a predefined list of permissions, depending on the user um, uh, count type. The second is that, uh, that it's built on a secure web interface. So there, it's password protected authentication uh, with authentication protocol and data is kept confidential. So certain data contained in CCR um, Obviously, right now it's empty, but once CCR is operative, there will be data that is confidential, that may be very commercially sensitive um, to certain stakeholders. So please note that you should never, ever share your account with another person. You may, um, you may, there may be additional person who is nominated by your state to, to have access to the account, but you should never share your account detail with anyone even uh, your co-workers in, your, in the same state or same um, authority. Third um, feature is uh, that it's a simple web application to upload or and submit information using predefined forms and functionalities. There are certain business rules that implement that is implemented in the CCR, which you will get to know more in the second segment of today's pre-seminar covered by a colleague of mine. Um, so last but not least um, is another important sort of feature of data uh, of CCR is that um, is a data uh, tra traceability and integrity. So all actions by all CCR users are timestamped in CCR 
and, and is recorded, including the electronic signature of the user who initiated any type of action. To, uh, and this is to ensure traceability and data integrity. So furthermore, if a user has to make changes uh, to an information that was previously submitted to ICAO, or the previous version of information will not um, so, then uh, the previous version of the information there will not be deleted. This information will be um, revised, um, but uh, will be archived in the CCR for future reference. So there is no sort of, you know, backdoor um, putting in information that like without letting anyone else and whatnot. Um, all the the action that was taken at CCR will be recorded and archived in the CCR. So um, within CCR, there are three user groups or roles. Um, this is a very important slide for you to understand, uh, so please pay an extra attention. Um, so I mentioned in the previous slide that there can be multiple users uh, with access to one state account. Um, this is actually about this. Um, so there are um, Corsia Focal Point, CFPs, and also state user STUs. So these are the two accounts that are sort of, uh, that has been attributed to a specific state account. Corsia Focal Point um, is nominated by a state and, uh, and, and can upload and change state-specific data and information and has a responsibility of approving and also submitting the information and data to ICAO. On the other hand, state user nominated by the Corsia Focal Point of a state, they are nominated by the Corsia Focal Point um, with, and they have access to functions relating to uploading and changing uh, state-specific data. However, Corsia uh, state user cannot submit information and data to ICAO. So one, one thing for you to understand is that um, there can be only one Corsia focal point per state. There can be only one. But um, if you wish, there could be multiple state users who supports this Corsia focal point. State user is optional. So if your state only has one person who is in charge of doing anything Corsia related, then, then you know, there is no state user to, to think about. Um, but in case there are multiple people working on CCR uh, from your state, then only one person can be Corsia focal point, whereas the rest of them can be state users uh, who is supporting the Corsia focal point. So, um, then, uh, and then in addition, there is ICAO super user, um, ISU, who is responsible for the management of information uh, and data in the CCR. The ICAO super user will check the submissions by state for format correctness and prepares, um, you know, aggregates, collates, do the calculation, whatnot, um, and, and prepares the ICAO uh, Corsia documents accordingly. So in other words, for states, there are two possible user types or user roles. Um, one being Corsia focal point, only one person per state and multiple st uh, state users if they wish. There is no limitation on the number of state users nomination. Um, so you can nominate as many colleagues as you have, um, in, you know, um, as, you, as you need but it is very important for you to understand the different roles and, and, um, and then um, think that since this person if ha will have access to the account of your state, um, that person is, uh, shouldn't sort of, uh, they, they should be authorized to have access to those information. So um, those, uh, it's important for you to understand that that different roles and authorities between user groups and, and who can be given access to what account at what level, especially between state uh, Corsia focal point and state user. So um, in the CCR, um, information and data are stored uh, in uh, individual ear records format. Um, for each of the five reporting areas that I've mentioned earlier, again, airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, of course, CI eligible fuels, and emissions cancellation, they are stored in individual records that are specific to a reporting year or compliance period. Remember the table that I've shown you earlier? You can sort of think about that. Um, so, for example, 
um, for the, uh, the record Canada 2019 airplane operators, um, this um, Canada 2019 airplane operators. This um, air record will contain information and data for all airplane operators attributed to Canada for the year 2019. So an easy way to kind of like understand this is to think of it as a filing cabinet with each drawer sort of representing one year record. At the beginning, your CCR account will be empty with no information and data like right now. So the account of state A is completely empty right now. However, starting in 2019 as Corsia Focal Point, you will fill in a three, three year records so with, with information and, and data for one, airplane, op, um, uh, airplane operators, two, verification bodies, and three, CO2 emissions. The same applies to 2020 as well for each of the subsequent and, and also um, for the, each of subsequent years. And then um, in addition from 2021 and onwards, state will also rep uh, report information data for Corsia eligible fuels then um, there will be um, also be information about the cancellation of emission units for pilot phase so um, and and then then the first phase and then uh, the second phase and so on so would so these whole sort of um, uh, information will be sort of copied uh, and, and will continue for the duration of course yeah so then what information is included in this year record well, it varies by the reporting area. Um, if you open one of the, these drawers, for example, within each year record or a compliance period record, um, the information and data will be organized in entries that are specific to that reporting area. So, for example, for 2019 airplane operators um, drawer, there will be entries of information related to a specific airplane operator. So, airplane operator one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. And, and within that entry, um, there will be information related to, um, to, to their names, their, uh, the attribution method to the state that is attributed, and also the ad address, et cetera, et cetera, whatever the information that is required for, uh, for that airplane operator. For CO2 emissions, say for 2019, um, entries will be associated with a specific state pair, so state pair one, two, three here, but state pair meaning from state, what state, to what state the the state pair, and then how many CO2 emission was uh, CO2 was emitted um, by the operators attributed to that state, and also uh, whether that information is confidential or not. So for a, a given year record, there will be multiple state pairs um, that is uh, state pair entries included in that year record. Another important aspect of CCR is the status of your record. Um, this slide is again, as sort of indicated at the top, um, is another very important slide for you to understand um, thoroughly. So there are four status available for any year record um, as presented in the left-hand side. Um, in progress, complete, ready, and locked. First is in progress. This is a default status when a year record is uh, first created. Both Corsia Focal Point and State User can add, edit, or delete information as much as they like. Once all the information is uploaded, both uh, Corsia Focal Point and State User can change the status to complete for Corsia Focal Point's review. Again, as I mentioned, um, State Users, you know, they are optional. Um, if there is State User, you know, uh, State User can add information as needed um, because they're supporting the Corsia focal point. And then once they're fully you know, sure that all the information is complete, then they then they change they may change the status to from in progress to complete for Corsia focal points review. So the second complete uh, second status, which is complete, which means um, that all the relevant information is uploaded and requires Corsia focal point to review the information. So again, um, at, because it's, the information is already uploaded uh, in this state, status, a state user cannot modify uh, the information. It is only for the Corsia focal point to review. And if there is any need for change or modification, Corsia focal point can change 
um, this um, year record in this status complete or can choose to revert the status to in progress so that state user can edit the information and revise as, as needed. Um, so Corsia Focal Point has the authority to, or has the, the, the option to revert the status back in progress or keep, uh, keep the status in to, in to complete and just revise as, as needed. Once the Corsia Focal Point is is sort of uh, happy with the information, is fully con uh, com confident that the information is indeed correct um, and, and is ready for ICAO's, ICAO's review, then um, third status comes in. So the third status is ready. So after the project focal point reviews and, and they're confident, so and they think there's no revision whatsoever is needed, then Course focal point can choose to submit the ear record to ICAO by changing the status to ready. So a, a, a ready ear record becomes read only. So again, this cannot be modified by course focal point or state user um, because it's again it's it's ready for ICAO's review. Um, course focal point is happy with information and they have submitted to ICAO. So by changing the status from complete to ready, you are submitting a year record to ICAO. The, the last status then is, is called locked. Uh, after, um, after ICAO super user receives information um, from the state by changing the status from, from complete to ready, um, ICAO super user checks the format correctness and uh, when they are, when the super user is happy or satisfied with the data, then ICAO super user can change the status to locked. It means that the information and data is uh, locked to conduct um, calculations like sectors growth factor or baseline, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, use that information to produce reports and, uh, and publications. So, Again, obviously, this information cannot be modified by um, Corsi Focal Point or state user. So both ready and locked status ear records cannot be modified. Only in progress or complete information can be modified by, by Corsi Focal Point. However, you know, we are all humans. There may be some mistakes that is made by, 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 um, by anyone, uh, by the Corsi Focal Point. Um, so in that case, um, then Corsia Focal Point can request ICAO super user to release this um, ready or locked um, data or ready or locked records to back to in progress status to revise that error. Then um, how, how you can do that will be covered in the later segment uh, by another co colleague of mine. So please um, note that these locked ear record because it's locked for, you know, to do the, do the calculation and also produce reports. If calculation is already conducted by ICAO as per the Annex 16 volume four, say for the baseline setting, emission setting, or uh, sector's growth factor, this new information that is submitted by the state will not be uh, used to adjust the baseline or nor the calculation. So, the, the new information will be recorded in CCR for reference and archived it, but that won't change the calculation of baseline or uh, the sector's growth factor. Lastly, um, in an extreme unexpected case where a state does not submit emissions information, again, ICAO 100% relies on states, member states to submit uh, the emissions, CO2 emissions from their uh, airplane operators that is attributed to state. However, in an extreme case, if no information is submitted by the state to ICAO in such a, uh, in such a case, again, although ICAO does not expect this to happen, um, as per Annex 16, ICAO will fill this data, uh, data gap by using other available information as a last resort. Um, and ICAO will put this ear record as ready ICAO data uh, just to designate that this ear record was not submitted by a state but created by ICAO. So it will be called ready ICAO data and will not go through in progress and complete because it's not submitted by the state. Um, 
but again, this will be only a special case that we hope it never happens. Um, but uh, to accommodate the Annex 16 uh, volume 4, this uh, I ready ICAO data designation was created. So it is very important for you to understand um, the different, different sort of sequences of data status from in progress to complete to ready to uh, locked and, uh, and, and, and understand who can modif modify what information in those, uh, those records. We'll go through the status changes or changes in sequence um, in the status uh, in the later slides. So uh, although it may sort of seem a bit daunting to you, you'll, you'll understand more in the later slides. So um, in sum, the general process of information and data through the CCR comprises a four simple steps. So again, you know, you have to select a, the reporting area that you want to report to. So again, by reporting area, I mean airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, course eligible fuels, and canceled emission units as shown in the slide. And then next, you will have to determine if the specific year record uh, already exists or not. So if the year record doesn't exist, then you have to create a year record. And by creating an year record, a, the, the data status will automatically, by default, be set to in progress. On the other hand, if the year record um, exists, or after the year record has been created, you can modify it by adding or edit, ed editing information um, and, and data as, as much as you like. Um, after all the update, state user or of course a focal point can change the status to complete to for course of focal points review so adding information will be done after creating the year record and once you know in progress status and after all the information has been added and there's no sort of you know addition revision needed then this the the data um, status can be changed to complete for course of focal points review Corsia Focal Point will review the information and validate the information and and submit when one uh, once you know satisfied. Then Corsia Focal Point will submit to ICAO by changing the status to ready from complete. So from complete to ready, this is the act of submitting the information to ICAO. Um, once received, ICAO will review the information and uh, if satisfied, will uh, lock the data status and uh, use this information to publish ICAO Corsia documents. So um, this is a sort of a summary table to highlight the different user groups and corresponding access rights or permissions in the CCR, um, which is sort of like a summary slide for from the previous slides. Um, um, so in this table, uh, we have summarized the permissions of basic CCR functions. So say, in, in essence, you can see that both Corsia Focal Point and State User can add and edit uh, and, and delete information and data um, in the CCR. However, creating a year record, and, and also it's only uh, for in-progress status. So, um, but the creating an year record can only be initiated by Corsia Focal Point. State user cannot do any. Corsia focal point, the one person who is granted to do so is a Corsia point, a focal point. Um, and, um, and also, it's not just creating your record, but also submitting the information to ICAO. State user cannot, can only sort of add edit data, you know, when it's in progress status. Corsia focal point, on the other hand, can add you know, whatever, uh, do this function in in progress and also um, complete status. And um, and also, in addition, they can create the year record and, and submit to ICAO by changing the data status from complete to ready. And obviously, for ICAO super user, we can create the year record, we can do edit and, you know, sort of modify the data. We cannot submit to ICAO, obviously, uh, and we are the only person who can use that information in the CCR uh, to publish an ICAO Corsia document. 
So again, as mentioned, this is a summary slide for the action that is capable, you know, for different user groups. And it's important for you to understand these, uh, the, the sort of difference between Corset Focal Point and state user, especially that uh, Corset Focal Point is the only person who can create a, a year record and submit information to ICAO. So I'll walk you through more in detail how information flows in CCR. Again, we are assuming that uh, there is a state user who is supporting the Corsia focal point in this case. But if there is only one Corsia focal point, you know, that person is basically assuming um, or taking the Corsia state user's um, sort of activity as well. So as mentioned, Corsia focal point is the only person who can create a year record. So, um, for example, in this, say, you know, for CO2, for example, uh, Corte Focal Point creates a year record, say, for 2019. Um, and then by creating a year record, the, the status changes as, as de by default in progress status, the, you know, the first status, uh, data status. Then, because, uh, then uh, both Corte Focal Point and state user can you know, add, edit, uh, revise, delete the information as, uh, as needed. Once the state user is confident that all the information that is needed is already uploaded, you know, verified and whatnot, um, then the state user can change the status to complete. By say, uh, changing the status into complete, there will be an automated email message that is sent to the course of focal point that to prompt the course of focal point to review this information because the information is already complete, you know, the course of focal point needs to review. And if, if he or she is satisfied with the information, you know, that person has to change status to submit to ICAO, right? So what this course of focal point will do is to sort of check, review the data and see if there's any revisions needed. If indeed there is any revision needed, then then Corte Focal Point will change the status back to in progress, so that the state state user can revise the data as, as needed. If so, because there is an action needed from the state user, there will be an automated email message sent to that state user, that, um, saying that you know the the status has been changed from complete to in progress. So you need to add or you need to revise or you need to delete whatever action that is needed. However, if that Corsia focal point is you know, confident of the information, happy with it, satisfied and sent, submit to I, wants to submit to ICAO, uh, Corsia focal point will change the status to ready. You know, this is the act of submitting the information to ICAO. Then ICAO super user will get an automated email message saying, you know, state A has submitted 2019 CO2 emissions information. Then, um, so, so ICAO super user will have to check the format correctness. Again, if there is error found, then this ICAO super user will not lock the information. It will change the status back to in progress for that state. And because there is the, the action is needed, Corsia Focal Point will receive an automated message saying, you know, the, the information that you have submitted is change it back to in progress. You need to uh, revise the information. Um, so again, the Corsia Focal Point, uh, the, then we restart sort of from here. So again, adding and editing information and checking, reviewing whether it's correct, et cetera, et cetera. So it comes back to again here. How, if, however, of course, uh, ICAO super user is happy with the information, you know, there's no um, error in the format, you know, all the formats is correct and whatnot, then ICAO super user will change the status from, from ready to locked, to lock this information and use that information to conduct any calculation needed or use that information to publish ICAO Corsia documents, documents that I've show, uh, shown you before for Corsia implementation and or Corsia for transparency purposes. So this in, this data flow chart sort of uh, summarizes the, the different roles that different user groups have to take um, and also the different data status. So if you have understood what I've sort of covered in the previous slides, this sort of slide is the, the summary shot that sort of captures everything that, that is needed. And please note that this is not just for CO2 emissions. This actually is for 
all the reporting areas that uh, that I'm talking about. So um, airplane operators, verification body list, or CO2 emissions, uh, course eligible fuels, or emissions cancellation, they're all reported in the same data flow. You create a year record and then you revise, edit, delete, whatever, um, you know, to, to change that year record. Once, complete, once you're satisfied, you change the status to complete, review the information and determines to submit to ICAO by changing the status to ready. Then ICAO checks, you know, satisfied, we lock the information and use the locked information to um, to to publish all ICAO, you know, course your documents. So um, um, that said, so sort of I think um, I'm sort of almost there. I can just summarize uh, what um, you know what needs to be done. Um, finally sort of some information um, that is uh, critical for you to understand or, or remember um, sorry um, so for each course focal point and state user um, is again connected to one ICAO state therefore um, you know they do not have access to the information and data to uh, of any other ICAO state you only have access to the information and, and data of your state that, that you are uh, that you are associated with. However, still this information is confidential, you know, um, and there may be commercially sensitive data. So you should not share the account detail of your your account detail, uh, meaning username and password, with anyone else in your state. Um, second, uh, if you know, again, this is this is uh, an extreme case. But um, if an ICAO state does not submit CO2 emissions for airplane operators attribute to the state, um, then ICAO will have to fill the data gaps uh, using, you know, alternative sort of available information, you know, and uh, and then uh, calculate the total se sector um, sector CO2 emissions for baselines and whatnot, and the sector's growth factor in a given year for for a given year, as per the Annex 16 Volume Four. This is again the last resort. ICAO does not expect this to happen. However, um, in order to accommodate this type of extreme or unexpected cases, if this happens, this information uh, or data will be filled by ICAO, and ICAO super user will sort of upload that information under the under ready ICAO data sort of status. So this uh, new year record that is created by ICAO super user will be set to this. Um, to this status. Um, another, so, um, so, I don't know if we have lost uh, Zi Yun, maybe she has a connection problem. Uh, this is Stelios Pesmatoglu from the ICAO Secretariat. Um, I, I think maybe Zi Yun is experiencing some problems, but um, you know, this is the last slide basically on this uh, deck of slides. Uh, it just tries to describe some of the... Uh, you know, things to remember for you in terms of um, the progressing of the status of a year record. There was also one question about in relation to what happens if a state is not able to submit information. And this is something we have tried to address in the CCR. Uh, through a process that um, it is ongoing in relation to how ICAO will fill the gaps in data if states are not able to submit information to ICAO. And uh, this is a very, um, we expect this not to happen, uh, but if it happens, if a state is not able to submit information on CO2 emissions, then ICAO will fill in the information uh, using uh, its own data sources. And this is provided for in the Annex 16, Volume 4. In, uh, in such a case, the uh, ICAO super user will uh, upload information in the CCR for a specific state. And uh, this information will be visible uh, by the Corsia focal point and other state users. And um, if the state users and the Corsia focal points, uh, they manage to find information, uh, then they can replace the information that ICAO 
you know, provides and maybe they update it. But only this can only happen and have like a meaningful, um, be, be like meaningful if the information has not been used to um, estimate the state's growth factor, for example, or estimates or estimate the, um, the total emissions for a specific year. Um, on the question of whether there is any kind of alert for the CFP, uh, if there is some change of uh, information, there are a number of automated email messages that you saw on the previous slides and between the different stages of um, when, when the status changes. So if uh, the uh, ICAO super user changes the status from, um, uh, from uh, ready back to in progress, then there will be an automated alert going back to the Corsia focal point to inform that there is a need to um, update some information. On uh, the last question about the COVID-19 outbreak, the ICAO Council is uh, currently considering um, any possible impacts of uh, the COVID-19 uh, to international aviation. And of course, part of that is also Corsia. And uh, it's looking at all different uh, potential impacts. And uh, we are expecting to, to receive guidance from the ICAO Council in the near future. Uh, for the time being, there is uh, no decision taken on any change of the deadlines. So we continue as is provided for in Annex 16, Volume 4. Um, there was one more question. So before we go into that, it says, how can the operator perform on-site verification? Uh, this particular uh, seminar, so webinar is not to address verification issues. Um, but, you know, very quickly, what I can say is that uh, this is something that has to be agreed between uh, the national accreditation body of a state and uh, also the civil aviation authority. Uh, so uh, please contact your national accreditation bodies to discuss potential alternatives of having um, on-site uh, verification and what could be accepted as, um, as a potential uh, alternative. And there are a number of options and a number of states are considering different options. Uh, so please have a discussion with a national accreditation body. If you do not have a national accreditation body in your state, you can always contact the regional accreditation uh, you know, body or the IAF, the International Accreditation Forum, uh, to get additional guidance um, on alternatives of uh, on-site verification. So with that, I am gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, log in into the CCR. Um, okay, I have already logged in, but uh, let me do this from the beginning. So I'm gonna log out again. Uh, so this is, uh, this is, what, this is uh, what your landing page is when you, when you, when you visit Corsia.turanto.com. And as I mentioned, is please note that there is no uh, www in front of Corsia. So then that's where you put in your username and um, your passwords and um, assuming everything is correct, then you should be, oops, <laughs> of course. Okay, so this is your home page. Uh, once you log in into the CCR, that's what you will see on your screen. And uh, your home page has, um, has five different parts to it. And I'm gonna walk you through uh, each one of them in turn. First of all, what you can see below the ICAO uh, logo is the, the name of your ICAO state. In this case, I have logged in as the Corsia focal point of uh, Somalia. So my ICAO state is Somalia and my role is a Corsia focal point. You can also see the information about yourself in this part of the screen over here, which says user information. That's where you will see your email address and also your role again. And if this information is not correct, then something is wrong and please, please, please let us know immediately. Uh, let ICAO know that there is something wrong with um, your credentials in the system. Another thing that I would like to point out at this point, and uh, also G, you mentioned in her presentation, is that you must never, ever uh, give to somebody else your username and your password. There is the potential 
uh, to have confidential information in your CCR's accounts, and you have to be aware of who has access to this confidential information. Uh, so please make sure that you keep your username and your password protected. And if you, you have found out that your password uh, has been, is known to somebody else, a uh, person who may be, not be authorized to use the CCR, then the first thing to do is to change your password uh, using the forgot passwords that uh, GU mentioned earlier. And also let us know as well, because it's important for us to ensure the integrity of, um, of, um, of the system and the data. So this is where under the user information, that's where you will see your uh, personal information, uh, make sure this is correct. Another way to get access to this information is if you click at the top right corner of your screen, where you will see basically your username. If you click there, then there will be a pop-up where again, you will see uh, your, uh, your account states, uh, your role, uh, information about your account. Also, you can change your password from there if you click on the change password. If you click on the about application in the version one of the CCR, you will see information um, about uh, the CCR. Right now, it's very uh, preliminary information. And also, you can log out from there as well. You will not see the bottom part, uh, what, what you see on your screen right now, it is only specific for me as, um, as I have a special status in the system, uh, super user. So you will not see that. So what you will see all the way up to the gray, uh, to the gray box. So this is how you get access to, uh, to your information in, uh, in the system um, on, on your screen. But you can also see this information through uh, the two links that you have just below the user information. You have IKEA state information where there are two uh, possible actions there, either to view your IKEO state or to view the user profile of all the CCR users into your IKEO state's account. And if you click on the I icon uh, next uh, to each one of those uh, blue texts, they, the first one will get you to your state's account. And just to um, point out, when you see an icon, it means that you can view the information, but you cannot change it. You have very limited access to this information um, as, as editorial access. This information is controlled by I IKEO and the super user, and I can, I can actually show you what this looks like. So if you click again on the I icon next to your um, IKEO state's name, you will see this kind of screen where you have five tabs. The first one is called details, and you have as basic information, the name of your state, and the second field, which is not uh, used right now, but we may use it in the, in the future, which is called IKEO state code. So this is where you see that the name of your state is, again, it would be your own, in my case is Somalia, but you know, in your case, it would be uh, your IKEO state's uh, name. And below that, um, in the future, there will be indication whether uh, your state is a small island developing state, um, least developing country, or a landlocked uh, developing country. Um, and this again will be set by ICAO. Uh, you will not be able to change that. The next tab is about all the users in, uh, that have access to your, uh, to your account. And if you click on that, uh, you should be seeing there your name, um, your first name, your last name, the, the email address that has been used to create uh, your account. And this is one part that you can make changes actually. And um, if you click on the, the pencil icon next to your name, uh, a pop-up, you will see another screen where you can make changes. You can add your middle name, you can add information about your address, your telephone number, maybe an alternate email address. But again, this information is optional is not being used for you to get access uh, to the CCR. Um, this information that if you want to provide, you could provide, but again, it, it, is, it, it is optional. The, uh, the, third, the third tab is called Corsia Participation. Again, uh, this is uh, something that you do not have access to in terms of making changes. Uh, this will change over time, and uh, this will be determined by ICAO based, uh, first of all, on voluntary participation into Corsia for different years of the scheme. And from 2027 onwards, we will take into account 
other parameters, such as the RTK data, and also the development status of uh, each state, uh, specifically if it is a small island developing state, if it is a least developing developed country, and if it is a landlocked developing country, um, and to address all the different exceptions that are that are um, that are provided for by um, Annex 16, Volume 4, and the Assembly Resolution. So the RTK data is being uh, will be provided for the year 2018, and again, this information you will not be able to change. Uh, this is data which is submitted by ICAO states every year to ICAO. ICAO collects this information, and uh, we will be providing this information uh, for um, this data really for information purposes only. The fifth tab on uh, on this particular page is called ICAO State Journal. And this is where you can actually see who has uh, changed what and when. And uh, this is something that uh, Ji Yu mentioned in her presentation about the traceability and the data integrity um, of, um, of the system. Uh, this is where you will see who may change this specific, specific part of the CCR. So this is only related to the IKO state that you see on your screen right now. There are other records like this one, the journals, as they are referred to in the CCR, which uh, relate to specific areas. And I'm going to show other examples in the second segment of, um, uh, of today's uh, training, uh, remote training session. So there here you can see that um, there's been a lot of changes over time, but uh, you will also see that, um, let me actually, what I can do is I can show you uh, that you can actually um, look at all the records at once, so you don't have to scroll, scroll through different screens. Um, this, all these changes, they go all the way back to when that particular record was created, and that goes back to the 25th of April, 2019. Uh, that was last year when we started the development of uh, the CCR. And you can see that on that particular date, this account was added by the administrator, and then different users did different things to this account. Of course, um, when you log in into the version one um, uh, of your account, all of this will be empty because you will be the first ones to make any kind of uh, changes. But the, um, the CCR, it does not only track changes, it also tracks who visits a specific um, website, a web page, even, even if no changes are made, if, uh, if there is nothing, no removals, no additions uh, whatsoever. So the CCR tracks every single action, and you can see again when, who did what, uh, when, and this is extremely important for the CFPs if they have to go back and reverse a specific action, at least they, they know who initiated um, an action that they want to reverse. Uh, so the latest action here is me viewing this information. So this has been recorded that uh, on today, at this particular time, uh, that's my time zone, that's when I viewed uh, this particular information. So you can see that even just viewing the information without making any changes, this is being tracked into the system. So this is um, the, the part where you can have a look about the ICAO state accounts that you have access to. And again, uh, if any of this information is not correct because you do not have direct access to it, uh, please let us know and we will make changes uh, for you. The, uh, the second link into this part, the ICAO state information, is about viewing uh, the user, the CCR user profiles. Um, in, in my specific um, you know, screen, it's empty because I have, again, as I mentioned, I have special status. But in your case, you should be seeing your uh, name there and your information. And as I mentioned before, you can make changes uh, to this part, but again, very limited changes. Your first name, your last name, your email cannot chains. If you want those chains, then you have to let us know and we will do it uh, for you. So this is how you get access to this information uh, about yourself, about your ICAO state. The third part of your homepage is uh, the navigation, the main navigation menu. And for all Corsia focal points, you will have, in addition to your home, uh, you will have five reporting areas plus a sixth one, which is called service request. State users will not have this service request. It's only reserved for Corsia uh, focal points. 
So you have basically the five reporting areas on airplane operators, verification bodies, CO2 emissions, coarse eligible fuels, and cancelled emission units. One of the features of uh, this navigation menu is that next to its entry, it, its menu item, you have a number. And this number is a white number in a red uh, square. And this indicates how many year records exist for this particular reporting area. So what you see on, on, on my account, on your screen right now, it says I have only one year record for airplane operators. I don't have anything under verification bodies or any other of the reporting areas, and I have not initiated any service request. Uh, over time, of course, this will increase as you add new year records into your CCR account, this number will automatically be updated. Um, if you would like to uh, minimize this navigation menu, you can do so uh, by clicking uh, the left pointing arrow at the bottom. So if you do that, uh, then you will only see the icons. But if you hover over the icons, you will actually see the full name uh, of the menu, of the navigation menu item. And if you want to maximize it again, you can click on the right, in, on the right pointing uh, arrow again, and uh, you will see again uh, the full navigation menu. The six items on the navigation menu are also reflected in the bottom part of the screen, uh, where you have your basically your dashboard for searching different parts of the CCR. And uh, each one of the navigation uh, items corresponds to one of the boxes. So you have one box for uh, report airplane operators, one for verification bodies, CO2 emissions, and so on and so forth. This particular part of, um, of your homepage will eventually become very useful when uh, you will um, add more uh, more records into the system. And if you want to search for a specific record, then you can use this part of your homepage to look for a specific year that's, um, that may be of interest to you and you would like to, um, uh, you would like to uh, go directly to. Now, the next part of your um, homepage is what is called My Favorites. Um, there are a lot of different screens in the CCR. And of course, you have your navigation menu, so you can jump you know, between different reporting areas. But if there are specific pages that you visit very often and you would like to create a shortcut for it, then you can do so by creating, by making them as one of your favorites. And let me give you an example how this has been done. Uh, we saw earlier that there is a you know, view, uh, if you view IKEA states, you have to go there, then you have to click into Somalia, in my case, and then let's say it is the RTK data. And I, I want to have you know, quick access to this uh, particular page instead of you know, clicking you know, three times, I want to be able with one shortcut to be able to visit this particular page um, immediately. If you want to make this page your favorite or one of your favorites, what you do is you click on uh, the star icon at the top of your screen. And when you do that, then you will be asked to give it a name. So you can say my RTK data or whatever, whatever makes sense, you know, or whatever you like uh, to name it and save. Once you have done this, if you go back to your homepage, then you will see that now under my favorites, they, there was one there before. Um, actually, let me remove that one. Um, so you have now my RTK data. So if you click on my RTK data, it will take you straight into this particular tab that you made it your favorite. And you will notice also that the color of the star has changed now into a light orange, uh, which indicates that this page is uh, a shortcut on your home on your home page. So this is like a cool feature uh, that you can add as many favorites as you want. I would like to caution you when you use this particular feature, because if you start adding a lot of those favorites, then uh, you know the size of uh, this book will increase. Then there is no limit to how many my favorites you can have, but the more you put there, the more clutter it become and maybe of less use. So use this feature wisely um, for areas that you actually visit and you would like to have quick access to. The last part of uh, the home page that I would like to demonstrate is uh, the inbuilt help menu that there is in the CCR. 
So if you, you will notice that in, um, in a lot of screens, there is a question mark at, at the top. And this question mark actually may be uh, embedded in other parts of, um, of specific pages. But for your home page, if you click on the question mark, then what you will see on your screen is uh, your help menu. And what we have done is we have added some information about specific parts of the CCR. So you have information about CO2 emissions, data status, ICAO state, aeroplane operators, and so on and so forth. So if you click on any of those, so for example, if I click on report CO2 emissions, then what I will see on my screen is a summary, um, information about the deadlines, uh, that uh, information has to be uh, submitted. Also, some very basic information on how to report on CO2 emissions, the different options that exist in the, in the system. And uh, also some following information about CO2 emissions for state pairs, information on airplane operators, and then offsetting requirements as well. Uh, this is uh, the first tab, which is called Summary. Uh, then uh, in some cases, there is a second tab, which is called Properties. And in this particular case, it describes, gives very, um, uh, very brief information on the data status that uh, Ji Yun explained in her presentation, uh, where it changes between in progress to complete, to ready, to locked, and who can you know, make changes to those. And uh, the third tab is about actions, about uh, unlocking the information, about releasing the information, and how can this be done. Um, again, uh, you can go back into your home, into your home uh, help uh, menu by clicking on the home at the bottom, and then you can go back and then you can look at um, other parts of the um, help uh, that um, there is inside the system. Uh, over time, we will refine uh, this help menu uh, with your help. So if you think that there's other information that you would like to see in the in the system, please let us know. And so we will try to add uh, more features uh, to this particular part of um, the CCR. So I will close it uh, from here. And uh, this is what I, I want to tell you about your homepage. It's very simple. Um, it is it is very standardized in terms of uh, you know what you can do in relation to um, to different functionalities of, of the CCR. And for the second segment, uh, we will of course we will learn here first, and from there we're going to move into different parts of the CCR, so we can show you some additional features of the system. I will stop here, and um, I will just go back to see if there are any questions uh, you may have. Um, some of them may have already been answered, but if not, I will try to, uh, to answer them. Okay. Hi, Celia. Hi. Um, sorry, sorry. Hi, I got back. Okay. <laughs> Um, there was one question from Rohit uh, saying that he couldn't see such tabs in his account under ICAO state tab. Um, uh, can you okay. sort of go to ICAO state tab quickly? Thank you. Sure. Yes. So um, I'm sorry about this. Going to have to look at you know why you don't see that, but uh, you should be able to when you click on. Let me go back. So if you click on uh, on the eye icon next to the view ICAO state, you must see something that looks like this with the name of your state. So in my case, it's Somalia, but of course, in your state it will be. Uh, the name of your ICAO state. So if you click on the eye icon, then uh, you're supposed to see five tabs. The first one is details. The second one is the CCR user, Corsia participation, RTK data, and finally the, the journal. If you don't see this, uh, we will look into it. We'll try to figure out why this is uh, happening. It's not supposed to, to happen and we'll get back to you. But uh, this is uh, what you are supposed to see. And again, as I mentioned, when I was first presenting this, this information is uh, read only. Uh, you have very limited access uh, to this information. It's only for you to uh, be aware uh, of what information about your ICAO state is in the, in the CCR. Uh, but if this problem persists for you, then uh, we will look into it and we'll try to figure out why this is, uh, this is happening.
Okay, I see that you got them now. Perfect, perfect. Um, there was also um, a question about a password um, that um, there have been several attempts to reset the passwords, but when they try to log in, it says invalid password. Um, okay, let us look into that and uh, we will get back to you. We haven't got this problem before, but uh, we, will, um, we will have to discuss this on one-to-one. -on -one. Uh, if you have any, any of these kind of problems about passwords and setting of the passwords, then we're gonna try to help you as much as we can. We're gonna have a um, short 15 minute break, uh, just to you gonna stretch your legs and then we'll be back uh, for the second segment of uh, today's uh, remote training. So we will be back here at um, uh, 10.45, unless you know there are any questions, we have like a couple of minutes before 10.30. So if there are any other questions, I will try to answer them. Otherwise, we can break now and be back here at um, 10.45.